Hi, this is Susie Henderson with EDUCAUSE. Thanks for joining me for Online Presenter Coaching, a series of recorded sessions about a variety of topics brought to you by the EDUCAUSE Speaker Concierge. Our goal is to provide you with the tools and information you need to be a successful online presenter. It would be best if you reviewed Getting to Know Adobe Connect before watching this video to design your online session. Teaching and learning are intertwined. It's all about people who are our colleagues, our students, and friends. EDUCAUSE events are about sharing information and learning. When preparing to develop your presentation, it's important to know what you are trying to accomplish and for whom. In the next few minutes, we will discuss these important topics that will help you more effectively design your next online presentation for EDUCAUSE. Knowing your audience is very important when preparing your talk. Think back to who you were considering when writing your call for proposal for this session. Is that still accurate? One of the critical steps is to stop and consider, who is my audience? Who am I designing this session for? Try to anticipate the expertise level of your attendees as it relates to your topic. Will they be new to this information, or might they be experts, or a mix? Is there information or expertise that you can draw upon during discussion? Considering who your audience is and the level of their knowledge will help you to design an effective presentation strategy. Next, you need to identify and set your presentation goals. One of my favorite quotes is from Alice in Wonderland about this very topic. The amusing and sometimes philosophical Cheshire Cat says to Alice, If you don't know where you are going, any place will do. My guess is that any place will not do for your talk. Identify your presentation goals to set the stage for a successful session for both you and your participants. When participants click away from your session, what do you want them to leave your session with? Are you trying to impart knowledge? Do you want to improve their skills? Are you attempting to change their opinions or attitudes? Or are you trying to achieve a combination of knowledge, skills, or attitudes? It's important for you to consider your goals for the session. What motivated you to write the call for proposal? What is unique about your session? Once you know who your audience is and the goals for, of your presentation or session, you are ready to create the presentation experience. And this is the fun part. In 1965, Robert Gagné published his seminal work, The Conditions of Learning, which identified the effective mental conditions for learning. In other words, what works to help people engage and learn. If you are not familiar with these nine events of instruction, it would be beneficial for you to visit the website listed here and learn more about these simple but effective events with specific ideas for implementation in your presentation. For example, one of the critical steps in a presentation is to develop interest or gain the attention of your attendees with novelty or surprise. Telling a relevant story is an example of gaining attention. You may also want to appeal to the learner by asking questions that they answer in the chat or offer an instant poll so that they will be further motivated to engage with you. Use relevant pictures or show a video. Not only do you need to gain the attention of your participants, but it's important to maintain that attention. Can any among us say that we have never checked email during an online event? Hmm, I dare say no. These moves are actually strategies from a presentation at the University of Central Florida to improve teaching and learning. Some of these ideas may be helpful to you as you plan your presentation and choose the features of Adobe Connect that you wish to use. As you design your presentation, consider how you will motivate your audience or participants to stay engaged with you during your session. The ARCS model of motivation may be helpful. ARCS is an acronym for attention, relevance, confidence, and satisfaction. 
which are key considerations to motivate others. Ask yourself, what can I as a presenter do to gain and maintain the attention of those attending my session? How can I make the information that I'm going to present relevant to them? Are there any strategies that I can use to boost their confidence? And what can I do to ensure their satisfaction? We would all like to see a raised hand asking questions or a thumbs up to let us know that we've been successful to motivate and reach our audience. Here is an example of an exclusive online session offered within Adobe Connect. Notice the speaker headshot in the upper left corner, two chat windows, a roster with one-on-one -on -one chat and audio issues, along with a large presentation window. This is a typical layout within Adobe Connect. It's visually busy, so keep this in mind as you design your presentation. Simple, visual slides that you can talk about are best. A number of web resources and links are available to help you on the Educause Speaker Concierge web pages under Design Your Presentation, and in particular, Online Presentations. Adobe Connect is like the blank billboard that you see here. Certain elements or pods need to be there, such as the chat or speaker headshots, but there is flexibility to relocate, resize, or introduce new pods for an experience. We'll spend the next few minutes talking about some elements to consider when designing your presentation experience. First, what's the best font to use? Clearly, Arial, because non-supported fonts such as Calibri are automatically changed into Arial during conversion of any PowerPoint presentation. I suggest you start with Arial on the front end so words and charts display appropriately. Make sure your master slide default font is Arial. The master slide sets and controls the font and sizes. To find the master slide, click on the View tab within PowerPoint. And within the Master View section, click on Slide Master to make edits to your master slide. As you design your presentation for participant interaction, consider your audience and how you will plan for engagement using the features of Adobe Connect in creative ways. Please review the Getting to Know Adobe Connect video to learn more about chat, polls, and the notepad. This is an example of a poll embedded in the Adobe Connect interface. Participants can click on a response in the small box or it can be expanded to a much larger size to draw attention to it and more easily display the results. Typically, Educause asks you to create a slide with your poll question and the answers included in it so that the Educause technical staff will know how to create a poll for you and when to display it within your presentation. Within this presentation, no poll is visible, and yet Educause technical staff can create polls and display them when the appropriate slide is displayed. Any type of content that you can access on your computer and display can be shared with an audience from within Adobe Connect. Keynote or Prezi presentations must be delivered through the Share My Screen pod. Share My Screen is easy to use once you understand a few practical steps which are explained in another quick tutorial titled Adobe Connect Share My Screen. If you use the Share Your Screen pod, it is highly recommended to have another device logged into Adobe Connect so that you can view what your participants see. There are special pods within Adobe Connect so that files can be uploaded for easy downloading by any attendee and another special pod to share web links. Adobe Connect can be used to foster interaction using the Raise Hand Status icon button located on the top navigation bar. It is the person with their hand raised in the red circle. If you click on the small down arrow to the right of the icon, the following status buttons are available for participants to use. Participants can raise or lower their hand. You can ask participants to vote by clicking on Agree or Disagree. They can indicate if they have stepped away from the session. In addition, they can express opinions about the volume level, the pace of the session, applaud, and express their laughter. 
These emoticons can support planned or spontaneous interactions during a session, so feel free to use them. You also have the option to ask participants to call in and communicate on the phone line. If requested, EDUCAUSE will offer live captioning of a presentation. There is a specific area or pod dedicated to captioning which you can see above the red arrow. The captioner, who is listening remotely, types the words of each presenter in real time that are displayed in the captioning pod. On the next five slides are some creative uses of Adobe Connect from a Smithsonian Museum Abraham Lincoln online conference that have very interesting uses of Adobe Connect. For more sessions to watch and more ideas, visit www.smithsonianconferences.org. This slide is intended to help the presenter learn more about the audience using a quick poll. Next, you see a general chat window on the left, followed by a poll question, and then a second chat window to justify your answer to the poll. I like the use of the visuals to show an actual page from the primary source journal being discussed, as well as a picture of the binding of the journal. There is another lesson to be found on this page. Can you find it? After the next slide, I will give you the answer to the question. This Lincoln scholar invited the input of his attendees to determine the focus of his talk. Each of the 16 Lincoln artifacts shown in the pictures was assigned a letter from A to P. Participants were asked to vote for the artifacts that the scholar should discuss in the poll to the right, giving everyone involvement in the decision-making process. What is the lesson to be learned from this slide? Well. It took me several viewings before I realized that sources is misspelled. Check your spelling at least twice, maybe three times, and then ask someone else to look over your presentation to avoid such errors. The same scholar asked a simple but interesting question and asked participants to respond in the chat. I think the black background with white words is dramatic and simple, but very effective. I also like the way the 16 artifacts are displayed around the chat window for an easy reference point when re answering the question. We have looked at a number of pods and features within Adobe Connect and some creative uses of those features to support learning and the goals that you have set for your presentation. Remember, Adobe Connect is like a blank canvas that can be customized to support your goals and objectives. As you finalize your presentation, capture your great ideas for layout, polls, and interaction by entering them into the EDUCAUSE online speaker form, which is available on the speaker information web pages. This will help the session moderator and the technical help to effectively support you during your session. And finally, EDUCAUSE wants to provide you with an opportunity to practice your presentation, and here's how. An Adobe Connect room is available for you to use. Please contact Victoria Fanning or Lauren Benevente at onlineconf, O-N-L-I-N-E-C-O-N-F, at educause.edu to schedule a time to use the staging room. Get familiar with the environment, upload your presentation, practice moving your slides forward and backward, test the pods, try out your engagement strategies, invite a few friends to listen to your session. There is no better learning opportunity than to record your session and play it back or have a friend give you feedback. We love your feedback. Has this tutorial been helpful? Do you have unanswered questions or feedback? Please feel free to send us an email to speakerconcierge at educause.edu. We do listen. There are additional presentations, documents, and information to help you along the way within Speaker Concierge web pages. We're here to help you, so good luck on your presentation. This is Susie Henderson for EDUCAUSE.